everybody be able to kind of celebrate all three at once. That's awesome. Well, it's an incredible, like, no pun intended legacy <laughs> that you have there. <laughs> um, so I was curious because I know that you some, the, someone from the studio or network came to you and basically said, vampires do a show, right? Uh, not, yeah, sort of. I was having lunch with Kevin Williamson and uh, our friend Jen Breslow, who worked at the CW. And we were talking about vampire shows. Um, and just vampire. I was reading Twilight. And um, Kevin Did you was, like Twilight? I love Twilight. Yeah. Well, um, the books. I love the books. Um, <laughs> mostly. I, I like the movies, but I love the books. No, I, I, I agree. The books have a lot more color to them. Yeah. Um, so I was talking about Twilight, and he was talking about True Blood, because he was a big True Blood fan. and. We were talking about how like vampire shows are probably dead, and then Jen said, "No, we're trying to make a vampire show," and mentioned Vampire Diaries, and uh, and she's like, "You guys want to do it?" <laughs> and Kevin was like, "No," <laughs> and I said, "Yeah," because Kevin was famous and I was not, so I was not going to say no to anything, and uh, and then he's like, "Oh, all right. Well, if you want to do it, I'll do it. Fine." And then we did it, and that's kind of how it was born. That's amazing. Now, had you read the books when you said yes? Uh, no, uh, no. I didn't know anything about him. He, uh, then I started reading the first one and I thought, oh, this is like Buffy. You know, it feels like a Buffy and I loved Buffy. So it was easy for me to get excited about it. And when you started to like craft the idea of the story, I mean, obviously, they, you know, the books are different. So like, how did you decide what to leave in the books? Because Obviously, like Twilight, for example, there's movies, and you know, the movies can't be 10 hours long. So you kind of have to say, okay, well, we've got to figure out how to make this shorter. But with a television show, I feel like it was different, but you still, of course, have to change things because some things don't work on screen. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's different kinds of adaptations when you're looking at making something out of a book. There's the Twilight adaptation, which is, there's, the fandom is so massive and so passionate. Um, that you don't mess with those books. You know, you don't have a lot of freedom to make things up and go different directions. You're really truly adapting the story beat for beat. You're just figuring out the best way to do it. Um, then there's like, um, then there's an adaptation like what I just did for Vampire Academy, which, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is, you know the books have been out for 15 years, but there's a strong fandom, and they were very disappointed, a lot of them, by the movie. So you have this like obligation to like give them enough of what they recognize. Um, but you also have the freedom, because the books are 15 years old, and like there's a whole new legion of people who never read them, to build your own story the way that you want to. So there's like that in the middle. And then there's Vampire Diaries, which was already like 15, 16 years old. Nobody had really ever heard of it. There was a small community online, but for the most part, it, the, the books had never sort of been famous. Um, and so you just take what you want, and then you make everything else up. <laughs> That's basically what we did for that. We took names. And made the rest up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I, did, I do think, so I, hopefully this you know isn't a sore subject, but I know it is a conversation between all the fans, but obviously in the book, Stefan ends up with Elena. There's a legion of fans, like myself, that would have thought that that was a great move. Obviously, it went the other way. Did, looking back, like, do you still feel like that was the, the move? I, I do only in that, as a storyteller, for me, the minute Nina decided to go after her contract was up, then it was Damon and Elena forever. Because until Damon, you know, if he, Damon was going to die in the finale instead of Stefan, that's a whole other conversation. Um, did you film that both ways? No, 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 no. We didn't even write it both ways, yeah. <laughs> but um, it just, they were, they had worked so hard to finally come together and there was no reason for that relationship to fail when we knew she was leaving. Like, yeah, okay, she can, she can be like, oh, I'm going to college in another town over, you know, I'm, I'm moving to San Francisco, 
see ya, peace out. But like there was no world in which that made any sense. And so we wanted to put her into this sleep spell, thereby sort of locking Damon into his love for her forever and locking their relationship together forever. If she hadn't have left, 100% story would have swung us back to Stefan. Not to say that that would have been quote unquote end game. It depends on how long the show goes, you know? You ride the waves of the relationships. But uh, there would have been one more at least brief shot at that before the end if I would, she was still there. I think it would have been fun to see that. To me, they were in game, but. Um, so 